Remember in Despicable Me when Gru shrinks the moon and all the ocean waves just suddenly stop? If you didn't cringe when you saw that, you should probably watch this video. Hey Curious Minds, Dave here. Today we look at the difference between tides and waves and how Gru got it wrong. We learn the fascinating source of tides and look at how they've influenced life on Earth, in biology and in world history. Tides are the rising and falling of sea level over hours, and waves are, well, waves. Tides are the result of the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun, while waves come almost entirely from wind, putting energy into the water as it blows. Which is why, if the moon were gone, we'd still have waves. And while waves are beautiful, tides have altered the course of history. So what on earth could be causing the oceans to rise and fall? Now imagine this hula hoop is Earth's oceans. My son here is the moon and my daughter is the sun. Seriously, Dad? Do I have to wear this? No, that's fine. You can take it off, buddy. Now the moon's gravity pulls on things, including water. So moon, pull gently on the oceans there. You see that? The ocean bulges out on the side facing the moon, and here's the weird part, it also bulges on the opposite side of the Earth. These bulges are where you find high tides on Earth, and in between, the low tides. And once every 24 hours, every part of the Earth moves through those bulges of ocean water. If you're on the coast when you're in a bulge, it's high tide, and when you're in between bulges, it's low tide. And since there are two bulges opposite each other, most places get two high tides and two low tides about every 24 hours. And now for a fun fact. While the moon pulls on Earth's oceans, it also pulls on the land itself and on you. Don't worry, you won't turn into a werewolf, most likely. Now the solid Earth moves just a few inches. Only sensitive instruments notice, but the ocean water being sloshy moves a lot more. In some places, just a foot or two, but in others, it's huge. Like in Canada's Bay of Fundy, the ocean can rise and fall 40 feet between high and low tide. I bet you people there pay attention to the tides. And now, it's time for the Seriously Dave question. Now all planets and moons in our solar system are affected by tides to some degree, but which object is affected by tides the most to spectacular results? Stay tuned for the answer. And now it's time for my favorite part of this video, moon phases, tides, and World War II. Spring, 1944, war rages in Europe. Allied forces would like to invade Europe from Great Britain, but they need to do it by sea, and they need some help from the universe. Specifically, a night with a full moon followed by a very low tide at sunrise the next day. Is this possible? Now we know that the moon affects tides, but what about the sun? Well, yes, the sun's gravity also pulls on Earth's oceans, though not nearly as strongly as the moon's. While the sun is huge, it's super far away. So let's take a quick look at the moon phases, because they're a result of the sun and moon's positions relative to Earth. It takes the moon around a month to orbit Earth, and its position around the Earth gives us our moon phases. All the while, its gravity and the sun's is pulling on the Earth's oceans. Sometimes the sun teams up with the moon, and other times they work against one another. I hate you. Now let's demonstrate. Now when the Earth, moon, and sun are lined up like this, we call this the new moon phase. And if those two team up and gently pull on that Earth, you can see it gets to be a pretty big oval. We call these spring tides, where the high tide is really high and the low tide is really low, and they happen at the full and new moon phase. These are my favorite tides because you can really explore tide pools and the incredible life that inhabits them. But what about during a first and third quarter moon phase? At these times, the moon's gravity is pulling perpendicular to the sun's. So sun, you pull up, moon pull to the side, I don't see much of a bulge on that one. Neap tides are, for lack of a better word, boring. The tides don't change much over the course of a day, which is great if you just want to hang out at the beach and not really do much of anything. And that brings us back to tides and their ability to alter world history. June 6th of 1944 was found to have the ideal conditions for allied forces to free Europe. Soldiers could parachute into France and land during a full moon the night before the invasion. And then the ships landing via the English Channel with soldiers could travel under the cover of darkness the next morning and land on large open beaches at the low spring tide. These brave soldiers with the help of the Earth, Moon, and Sun successfully took back Europe, eventually bringing the continent peace and prosperity once again. But there's something that always bothers people. Why do both sides of the Earth bulge out? The answer is actually really fascinating once you understand it. It has to do with gravity and the fact that gravity gets weaker the farther away two things are from one another. This is no joke, the Earth's gravity affects you less on top of a mountain than it does at sea level because you're further away from Earth's center of mass. It's not noticeable, but it is measurable. Now look at the Earth and Moon. The near side of the Earth is 8,000 miles closer to the Moon than the far side. 
so the moon's gravity pulls more on the near side. It's still pulling on the far side too, but not as much. So even though both sides of the Earth are being pulled on by the moon's gravity, the Earth and its oceans stretch. It's like my hands. Even though they're both moving the same direction, since one is moving faster, the distance between them increases. And this leaves the Earth with two high tide bulges to enjoy. And the answer to today's Seriously Dave question is Io, Jupiter's closest moon. They are so close that the gravitational forces of Jupiter cause Io to contract and expand, kind of like a paperclip being bent over and over again. As a result, its insides are molten and it is covered in volcanoes that are constantly erupting into space. It kind of looks like a giant jawbreaker to me. Thanks for taking this title journey with me. And if you made it this far, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to the channel. It makes a big difference for small creators like me. Be good to each other.